What is good? How we doing tonight, Jay Wayne? Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I don't have any Jags paraphernalia yet, so I had to put on my Clemson gear. Oh, yeah. Pumped up about some maybe getting a new favorite professional team. <laughs> yeah, and they're nearby. They got a pool in the end zone. Let's go. <laughs> a lot of urine in that pool, I would suspect. They do limit the amount of people in there, but I yeah, I mean, going on. Just... everybody's doing it. <laughs> yeah. The alcohol kills it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's a, whatever. A lot of chlorine and, uh, I mean, water treatment plants. They're using all sorts of things to treat water and send it back to you to drink. So I'm sure the Jags have it figured out. Yeah. You 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 don't know what's in your diet soda. Tell, don't tell me you don't want to get the vaccine because you don't know what's in it. <laughs> uh, obviously, no Big Co tonight, so we're missing a leg of the tripod. Only only a bipod tonight. Big Co has a to. Uh, Big Co, uh, you know. What is that? No good. No, I like it. I just, okay. It's uh, funny sounding. Bye, pod. <laughs> Bayco had to have an appendectomy, I believe, or have his appendix removed. We just so. always putting Big Co's medical history out there. To the yeah. World. <laughs> well, it's, I had an appendectomy when I was in the ninth grade, so. Yeah. He, he'll be okay. So he he will be back, uh, but he said he I, didn't want to come on for fear of laughing and it would hurt. So didn't want to get too excited and laugh. And uh, yeah. he, he's obviously you know jazzed up about these guys. So yeah. Uh, so you have to wait another week or so to get his opinion on some of these guys. But we wanted to hop on here and and give you some initial quick draft reactions here. Let's call this the party pump before the big soiree. Get that lactic acid built up. Uh, make those guns look a little sweeter, even though, you know, you maybe not be working them like you should be, but you got to walk into the party looking swole. I always um, forget to do a party pump before coming on here. And then I put my arms <laughs> up like this and I'm like, man, I wish I'd have done some pull ups or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we are uh, we're mostly here for you degenerates or addicts uh, who, you know, are going to start robbing and acting a fool if you don't get your fix. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get that fix right into your veins week after week. Uh, we'll be keeping it fairly surface level tonight with more so quick initial reactions for y'all. But that mocks will be coming up shortly, though, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, you got to get subscribed. We'll be doing uh, we just did one on the Discord channel. Uh, we'll be doing a couple more. We'll get one ready for for YouTube and then we'll move on to a super flex mock uh, rookie mock uh, some tight end premium action. Uh, so that was pretty fun last night to see how those changed. And we'll be we'll be getting one ready for you guys soon. So be sure to subscribe, uh, like comment on on what we're talking about. If we missed anybody or if you disagree or agree on anything that we're talking about, again, we're not going to get super deep into things. Just wanted to uh, get something out there to uh, see how we felt about things. And, and for you, for you degenerates, um, can we so, even call this a reaction show? Is it like, it's too late to be a reaction? Show? Yeah, it's, it's post, it's the post reaction. Um, then afters. we're going to do a, this is, we're do a, this is what they say. Is that what the, the kids afters. call afters? Yeah, this is what you call an after, you know, a couple, <laughs> couple of key bumps, couple of gator tails, uh, so a bad story or two and, uh, some terrible jokes and staying up way past your bedtime. All right, so you are about to hear so much about landing spots and draft capital. It's really going to be ad nauseum, as the Latins would say. Um, but really, for the next couple of weeks or even months, depending on you know how far away your draft is, we're going to be talking about this for a little while. And we're certainly not excluded from that group of, of talking about draft capital and landing spots, but but... Maybe we just pump the brakes just a hair. Whenever Before it suits my argument, that's when I want to use well, it. Of course, and like I said, we're not a, we're not you know we're not uh, removed from using it and talking about it because there are there is some important factors. But let's not pretend like it's it's the almighty here. And that's just wanted to before we get into some of these quick reactions, kind of talk about that for a second. So obviously, landing spots are important. You want a system that fits your player's particular skill set. Obviously, there's a small portion of players who are fairly bulletproof, um, but that doesn't go for every player, obviously. Um, so, you know, you got a guy like AJ Brown, great player. Everybody really liked him. He was kind of the one B to uh, DK Metcalf. Some people maybe even liked him more than DK Metcalf, but then bad landing spot. He's hang gliding. Uh, he's dead. Uh, now, probably the dynasty receiver one right now, like 
they didn't draft anybody really. And he's about to get a million targets and he's lethal with the ball in his hands. He's my favorite receiver right now in dynasty. And you know, number so, one, huh? I mean, he was number two last time we did ADP updates only, only ahead of Justin Jefferson and they didn't address that receiver core at all. So it's him and Josh Reynolds and probably some late round picks and some undrafted free agents. So Nick Chubb, you know, couldn't be good in Cleveland. Terrible landing spot. Terrible. You, you better not draft that guy. Better no take Sony Michelle be instead because the Patriots was a way better landing spot. He only just freaked on you last week, last year, and, and missed a, a portion of time and was still absolutely absurd. Miko Hardman landed in Kansas City. What a wonderful landing spot. We got to move him up, you know. Imagine him in this offense in a shallow bench dynasty league such as FFPC. If you're faced with any sort of draft adversity or any sort of uh, injury adversity in season, it's really hard to hang on to a player like Miko Hardman. Maybe you don't have guys that are going on R, but missing big chunks of time when it's a short bench, it's hard year after year to just keep hanging on to him when injuries happen and it, he blows up for one week here or there, and then it's it's nothing. So it's you know I'm not saying that Miko Hardman can't be good, and I'm still stabbing on Miko Hardman's, but he wasn't worth moving him up to the first round. Mm -mm. Or even early second. Yeah, I mean, listen to this list of wide receivers. Miko Hardman, J JJ Arthega Whiteside, Paris Campbell, and Andy Isabella were all taken ahead of DK fucking Metcalf. Just wrap your brain around that. That brings me to my next the next part of this conversation is draft capital. And there it is. You know, if you want to just put, put all your eggs in that basket of saying, well, the draft capital list and draft capital that, like where does, is Andy Isabella even on your dynasty roster anymore? I, you know, I don't, I don't deep, know but, my deep dynasty roster, right. but not my FFPC roster. That's for right. Sure. And who else did you mention there? JJ Arthega Whiteside. He's not even on my deep roster. Fuck that guy. Like convert to tight end or get <laughs> off my roster. Yeah. Um, and they already have Hakeem Butler. They don't need two converts over there. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't Jehovah's Do they Witness. still have Hakeem Butler? <laughs> yeah. I, th I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, you know, again, of course, draft capital is very important. Opportunity will be plentiful with, you know, solid to strong draft capital. Nobody's arguing that that's the whole point of the draft capital. Like you're going to continue to get opportunity, even though maybe you didn't show that you deserved it right away. That's what that will lend you. Um, and I, there, obviously there's some other things among those uh, that goes with draft capital, but that's one of the bigger ones. And you, you just mentioned it there and, and, you know, draft capital means so much until you're a fourth round overall pick. And then you're cut for an undrafted running back. You said and fourth then, round, but you meant fourth overall. Sorry, pick. fourth overall pick. Yes. And in, in the NFL draft, Leonard Fournette, Lombardi Lenny gets cut and becomes Lombardi Lenny. I like to call him Uncle Lenny. Now he's now he's Lombardi Lenny. But draft capital was so important until he got the axe for an undrafted free agent. You know, it's it's so important until it isn't. Hey, it's me again, McCall Hardman. Here I am. I'm making the list twice. Andy Reid moved up to get me. He traded up. I mean, I, you got to move me up. Draft me. Of course you have to. He's on the chiefs. You got to draft them. Uh, Rashad Penny first rounder. You better move him ahead of Sh Chubb and, and Sony Michelle. See, we told you that he's good. He had 2000 yards rushing. He's got to be good. When we tried to tell you a million times, he's not better than these guys, but Hey, you know, what are you, you going to do? We he's definitely a lot of good though. Definitely good though. Yeah. I battled on YouTube for two months with the same two jabronis. Uh, which I'm pretty sure they owe us a bet payoff of some sort somewhere that they did not pay off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brandon Ayuk last year, strong draft capital. Nobody liked the guy. Nobody liked him. He ended up being a mid to late second round pick in all your dynasty startup or rookie mock drafts. And now he's a great player. Like the NFL tried to tell you that the draft capital was good. And this guy was good. And you guys basically said, ah, fuck you. We right. don't like him. Same no, thing happened with Calvin Ridley. Like the draft capital is there, but the analytics community want to tell you that he's not any good because of the bad dominator and the late breakout age and the bad broad jump and he's old, but you had the draft capital, but he's still not good because he didn't check all these boxes. Now he's like, you know, an awesome player on your team and has been every single year. <laughs> right. So it's just, you know, you can, it's use it when it's convenient. I get, I understand all the parts, principles and everything that, about landing spot and draft capital, but let's just, not let it be the be all end all like Kadarius Tony this year 
Nobody liked him coming into the draft, but now they were telling you that it might happen. I kind of compared him to Brandon Ayuk before the draft. Uh, Strong draft capital, but nobody likes him. And now he got drafted by the GM that everybody loves to hate in Gettleman. And of course, fuck that guy. Hey, listen, I don't necessarily like the pick either. Gettleman finally traded down and then he still takes Tony. They obviously wanted a receiver. They didn't get him, so they picked Tony. I think they probably should have went elsewhere, but there's still draft capital there. And he's still a game changing type player, whether you guys like him or not. Like I, I do like the player after the draft, urban Meyer said he was the first guy that broke his heart that he couldn't draft him. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. There's right. he, urban Meyer also said after drafting ETN that he was, is going to be their third down back. It's ridiculous. Right. Uh, but, I, I heard that other GMs were saying they, they were hoping that Tony would fall to them. In the right. So the consensus round. of the NFL is telling you that you should, that, that they like Kadarius Tony and uh, you guys don't like Kadarius Tony because of the late breakout agent, yada, yada, yada. I think he's a pretty good player. Now they do have some receivers there. So that it might take him a minute to really get on the field and start shining, but he can do a lot of different things for that team. And they've now surrounded Daniel Jones with tons of talent and aren't giving him no reason uh, to not succeed. So, you know, yeah, Canarius Tony might not be your favorite guy, but he's got draft capital now. So, you know, and hey, listen, we know John Ross, top big, big pick. That was a dumb pick, too. They shouldn't have picked that guy. And you shouldn't have been moving him up in your draft class because of it. Henry Ruggs, dumb pick. It's not that I dislike Henry Ruggs or John Ross. That was just the wrong place to pick those guys. NFL guys get it wrong, too. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying in the fantasy realm, when we're talking about all this stuff, let's just not use that again as the almighty be all end all. And, you know, we're going to use it when it's convenient and, and throw it in your face when it's convenient for your argument being on the opposite end of things. And Hey, we're about to go through these lists of guys real quick. And we're going to talk about some landing spots and how the value changed. That's the most important part about this whole thing. It's about where these guys end up, where the, where the dynasty expert people end up kind of setting them up to be, and then the public is going to perceive, okay, yes, 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 no. And they're going to move guys around accordingly. And eventually the dust is going to settle where the values end up. And that's where this all becomes a big part of the puzzle that you need to figure out for yourself. Where do I value these guys? Cause that's what it's going to come down to. Does Tylen Wallace, uh, land in what is perceived to be a bad landing spot with not great draft capital? 131st overall with, you know, some wide receivers. I haven't even really heard of going in front of him. Hurt his rookie stock for me. Sure. Yes, absolutely. It should. Like, I, I understand that part. I really, I would have absolutely drafted him before I'm on Ron St. Brown bef- in, bef- with nothing disclosed of nothing going on. Now that's not even a decision. Like, so I understand the whole thing, but like it's going to boil down to value. Am I still going to take Kadarius Tony? Probably because the value is going to end up in a spot that I really like him. I'm not going to take him in the middle of the second round anymore, but if I can get him in the middle of the third round now, beginning of the third round, I still like the prospect. I still like the player. And at the third round, I think it's value. You, Tony? Uh, no, uh, Wallace. Sorry. Oh, Wallace. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I don't Island think Tony's going to last that long. Yeah. Uh, Cause but, but yeah, Wallace, I mean, yeah, you don't have to take him mid second anymore. You can take him third. That's where the value has changed and that presents a value to it. Right. We'll get to him. But Trey Sermon, we're in the UDPL draft and he just got taken like two, one or one two, two. 12 or something or, you know, and that's a super flex, you know, yeah. that's a super flex tight end premium league. And he's just shooting up the boards. And before the draft, there was value in Trey Sermon. Now there is not much value in Trey Sermon. It's uh, well, it's the value, the money. value, the value of the player has escalated. There is some value in the actual player now, but where you have to draft him, the value is, has now disappeared and it's, it right. becomes risky where the risk factor was built in on Sermon before. Right. And, but we'll, we'll get to him in a second. And just sure. to close this out before we go to everything else, like Jonathan Taylor last year, just to bring some new relevant, the most relevant guys, Jonathan Taylor landed in a good spot with good capital for the way the running backs got drafted last year. And everyone was still so fucking mad at this guy for half or two thirds of the season that he sucks. What's wrong with him? We got to trade him. Like, no, you do your homework, do your research, watch the games, figure it out for yourself and realize that he isn't Trent Richardson. Calm down. Have a little patience. Everything too, worked like- out for you guys. Landing spot was great. Capital was great. Ah, oh, fuck that guy. Clyde Edwards, a 
oh, best landing spot ever. Like, hey, we got excited about it too. We liked Clyde edwards alaire but this value thing that this goes back to, he was a value, and then the value got erased. I don't own any Clyde edwards alaire because any spot that I was anywhere near that top, I traded up to get Jonathan Taylor because he was clearly the better prospect. Now, landing spot was great. You got to draft Clyde edwards alaire over one. Now everybody hates him. He sucks. Like, Oh, that guy, he's he's the worst out of all those rookie running backs now. And it's like, no, the situation's still pretty good. He was actually really good until he led up to his injury and he was a rookie. Like, Clyde edwards is probably going to be just fine. And he is on the Chiefs. Like, yeah, of course, I do like that. I still like Clyde edwards Alaire Right now, that value thing, Clyde edwards Alaire is a value right now. So that's what we're trying to talk about. That's what we're trying to figure out. That's why you need to subscribe to the Rookie Mocks. And when we get into these startups so we can figure out these values, let's get on to the show. Enough ranting and raving. Um, we're just going to have some fun here and uh, run through these prospects real quick. Let's do it. <laughs> it's been a minute since I said that stupid shit. <laughs> All right. Well, these guys are in no particular order here. Uh, just kind of threw some guys down on the list. Going to talk mostly the 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 first you know, There's somewhat of an order, but it's not a ranking. 24 guys here um, and, and kind of go through them. So really like the top five guys being Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, uh, Jamar Chase, Pitts, and Javante Williams. Nothing really changes for me with those guys. Um, they all kind of stay where they are. Now, however you really want to churn those guys up, doesn't really matter to me. To me, Javante always stays at the bottom of that list. Um, and But if you want to say, hey, I'm taking Chase over Najee and E.T., Hey, I'm not going to argue with you. Our our personal, or at least my personal, I know you feel the same way, Jay Wynn, but I don't want to speak for you. Um, we're going to take those running backs in the rookie drafts early, especially if we think they're like premier talents because it is so damn hard to find running backs. If you do mock drafts and you're on sleeper, you see those green boxes because the running backs are green and all of a sudden it's so fucking dry by the fourth round that if you don't have one or two of them or even three, like... Man, it's it, good it, luck. You're going to be stabbing around when I can literally draft a <clears throat> line, a long, large bar of blue and smash it out of the park with a couple of those receivers. Hey, I think Chase is going to be great. He is going to be good. So I'm not mad at you for taking him over those guys and using the old, I can start him for 10 years. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's fine. I don't, I, okay. I, I get it. I can understand it. It's safe. You're not messing it up, but I'm still going to take Najee and ET. Uh, Javante doesn't quite make it into that tier for me. He'd be at the bottom of that list. And then Kyle Pitts. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I would, I would take, I would take uh, chase over Javante and, and I don't know what I would do with Pitts and Javante, depending on my situation. I could be fine taking either one of those guys. Pitts seems a little safer, but I mean, it's still the running back and it is so hard to get running backs when you're in drafts and mocks. Like you said, it dries up. There's no waps for running backs nah. in the fourth, fifth round is it's a darb. It's a dry ass running back <laughs> is what is what happens. You're, you're, you're like, man, I got to find like a Ronald Jones or it's just like, man, I wish I would have taken a running back a little sooner. Yeah, you got You got to so go dry. You got to burn some picks up trying to find Naheen Hines, which I'm fine with. And I'm, I want to take those stabs on those guys still, but you know, I'd like to get a number, at least one big time workhorse and at least another guy that I know I'm starting every week for my running backs and then use the rookie draft to replenish that stock and keep it moving forward. And this year, we're not in a good position here, man. Like last year was a good position to help you restock and reload this year after the first three running backs. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to get to those. So Najee Harris lands in Pittsburgh. Um, I feel fine about that. Doesn't change anything for me. Obviously, you would like to see them spend a little bit more on offensive line early um, or in free agency. But they have at all. But they have a good they have a good team. They have a good offense. You know, if Ben can be Ben for the first eleven games of the season, then and where they were undefeated, uh, they just added Fryermuth and they brought all the receivers back. So you know, I think that this offense can be good. I think Harris can give them a boost in the run game. They obviously saw there was a deficiency there last year. Um, now and Ben's down know. to throw it to the running back too. So that makes me feel a little bit better. Like that receiving production that Harris brings to the table can counter some of the porous offensive line play that they're going to experience. Yeah, and and over the last you know, years over there that, you know, you, you think of the Pittsburgh Steelers as being a hard nosed smash mouth team. Well, they, they don't, they're not near the top of the charts and in, in running the ball, but it should be a good offense, even if it is just kind of shorter intermediate stuff. But, uh, you know, I think Ben's arm will be decent, at least for the first half of the season. And again, this is dynasty. It's not just about one year. 
Um, and I think Najee's just great. And I think the, the receiving upside is huge. Absolutely. Um, they did. They did end up taking some more uh, linemen a little bit later down the line. I believe they still have a good offensive line coach. I'll check on that as we're going and check back in. But, you know, it's a pretty solid organization all around. They usually do things uh, the right way and keep keep them uh, in the hunt here. I don't think I don't think um, Mike Tomlin's ever had a losing season. So uh, any thoughts on Najee Harris? Yeah, and my initial thought was awesome. Someone said it, you know, when he when he puts on the Steelers uniform, it's just, it, it just like, oh, yeah, that looks like he looks like a Steeler. Like he's just yeah. which they don't necessarily play to their persona. Like you were saying, you know, they, they have that mentality of being a hard no smash mouth team. But they don't like you're saying, they don't lead the league in rushing. They don't, you know, they're not, not even in like the top half of rushing most years. So. Right. And but but still, I mean. Is a decent landing spot. It didn't do anything for or against me. It was just like, cool, and Harris, you know, if if I wasn't wearing a Clemson shirt, I would take Harris 1-1, you know, and I'm going to tell you that that's probably what you should do. Unless, I mean, if you want to take E.T. Or, Trev, or, or Chase, go for it. But Yeah, I mean, there's let's move to E.T. here. There's there you, I think you can make a case for E.T. for number one. I mean, people, the, he, we kind of said that he had been good for too long. And people pushed him down. And then it seemed like two weeks or so before the draft, he started really gaining speed again and saying, oh, this guy's great. I don't know what everybody was talking about. Maybe he's even the first running back off the board. They pretty much go boom, boom. Uh, he ends up in Jacksonville. He ends up with this guy, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, they have a decent O-line there. I think Urban's going to at least figure it out offensively. They'll probably be down a decent amount. ETN showed that he can be great in the passing game. Uh yeah, people still don't want to give him that much credit for being a great passer, catcher, pass catcher. But then Urban's coming out saying he's all oh, he's the third down back. Like, well, you're gonna want to give it to him a little bit more than that. But I mean, I cu- I can't argue too much with you know. I, I obviously I think Alvin Kamara is a much better receiver, and they don't move necessarily the same way. They get comp to each other, not necessarily fairly, but I could see a bunch of targets and a, and a fair amount of carries and, and that, that workload can only go up. So I'm excited about ETN. Yeah. And the, and the, the, the comfortability, is that a word uh, with, with Trevor and, and ET and, you know, being able to dump it down, hit him on a screen, check it down. I'm in trouble. Trevor um, knows that he can get an, an 80 yard touchdown if he right. dumps it down. So oh, and that's the, that's, that's kind of the difference maybe between Harris and ET where ET is hold your breath. He could really make a big play happen at any time where Najee isn't necessarily like the biggest, longest conversion for a touchdown kind of player. Uh, not that he doesn't have greatness and what he does, uh, but I mean, he not, is still this, pretty not the same way powerful, but yeah, a home run hitter like ET was, he can't um, torque wicked cables like ET can <laughs> No <laughs> shitting on them boys. All right. So let's move on to Jamar chase. I think we both have him basically, kind of slotted here next anyway just happened to be this is how we're talking about him uh goes uh, goes to Cincy I would like him to take Penny Sewell there I think I think he could be a generational Joe Thomas type just whole anchoring down that that you know you could have a, a good left and a right tackle now and and be really you know trying to minimize the amount of times that Burrow gets hit and maybe forced into an injury like situation here uh but they take chase again, familiarity there. Well, that's kind of the, was the common theme, especially for those receivers uh, in the top of the draft here. And, and to I'm their not, credit, to, to the Bengals credit, they did come back in the second round and pick they up did. Uh, the Clemson left tackle, uh, yeah. Jackson Carmen. And I think he's going to slide into guard. He's a young, athletic, high upside guy and, and is going to definitely bolster that. The, I guess they brought in like Frank. Pollock, who's a pretty well-regarded offensive line coach. They signed Riley Reef in the offseason. Yep. They got Jonah Williams coming back off an ACL and had a shoulder injury the year before that, so two straight years on IR. He was the 11th overall pick in 2019. So they have mm-hmm. been making moves towards their offensive line, which is maybe what they felt better, felt good enough to, about taking Chase instead of Sewell, right? Um, but yeah, I can, I can see your argument for why you wanted them to take Sewell. Either way, though, it's all this is all good for Joe Mixon. I mean, there's nobody else there. Yeah, well, save, save that, save that, save that. All right, save all that. right. But it's good for it's good for Jamar Chase. He's a, he's again a big play yeah. guy, familiar with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is not scared to to push the ball down the field. And now you have you know the 2020 national championship 
uh, receivers on either side of you. So that's pretty strong. And then Tyler Boyd's still there and, and still good. So, and Joe Mixon to add to that. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're, you're moving forward. It could be a pretty elite offense. You, Burrow was the Bengals were a great team to bet on because he kept everything close, even in the you know situation that they were in last year. Uh, so he's just know, all about ball, man. He's just all about, Oh ball. God, I hate that. Anyway, I've been waiting to drop it. Cause I know you hate it. <laughs> all right. So Kyle Pitts goes to Atlanta, uh, fourth overall pick. I, I like it. I'm not upset about it. Matt Ryan is, you know, a, a good quarterback, whether or not you, you like Matt Ryan or not, like you he's like good him. enough to facilitate, uh, plenty of fantasy assets. Is this Julio state Does Julio go? I don't know. This is probably going to be a 30 point a game offense, especially if Julio's still around Calvin Ridley's good. You'd have to think um, that Julio's staying around with them, not taking a quarterback with them, not taking another wide receiver. Yeah, it does kind of like, yeah, that's a good point. It does kind of lend to maybe, Hey, we're not really rebuilding here. We're going to try to go do the damn thing. Right. Um, but it took a quarterback. I could see him moving Julio, but yeah, but I think that, you know, Pitts. maybe is, they still do. I just, that's one of the thoughts. Yeah, that that's fair. That's a good thought. We, we've, we've been high on Pitts just like everybody else. There's not too much to talk about. Like if it's tight end premium if, and you wanted to take him at one, four or one, three or whatever, knock yourself out. I think, I think he's going to be great. He's basically a receiver and a matchup nightmare. Got a whole video on him. So check that out. All right, Javante Williams rounds out kind of like the big, big guys here to to kind of maybe tear break it off. You could probably sub tier some things if you really wanted to. He goes to Denver right off the rip on on day two, essentially, of the draft. Um, and you know, I like that. You know, Garrett. Do Bowles, you? I'm, I was curious because you know. The- well, it's it's really just comes down to quarterback play, man. And it, I think we'll we'll see what happens. There's some Aaron Rodgers talk. There's some they obviously traded for Teddy Bridgewater for dirt cheap. I think he's plenty good enough to facilitate the receiver the 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 defense to kind of back off a little bit. They have great they have Sutton and Fant and Judy and Hamler. They have weapons everywhere. Garrett Bowles finally stepped up. They have a decent offensive line. Uh that defense uh, now, you know, they just picked up Sertan. They picked up another corner in the offseason. If they can get their pass rushers healthy, Vic Fangio is the man. I don't know if he's a great head coach, but there's one thing he can do is coach defense. And if he can get his guys healthy, they're going to be in games with that defense. Um, and I think, you know, Javante is probably for them getting a, a smash mouth kind of identity, maybe going with a, with a Fangio running the defense might be kind of what they're looking for here. And, you know, obviously you got Melvin Gordon probably for another season, but Javante is going to get his this year and then move into being the guy. And the only thing that is a little that sucks a little bit is that there could be a regime change. And that's that's never great for incumbent players. But I think Javante will do enough and has high enough capital. There it yeah. is. Melvin's uh, on the Melvin's on the last year of his deal. So he, he, he'll be out of there next year. They, they have a new on. GM that they're not going to get rid of. I don't think with Fangio leave. So that's sorry. Sorry to cut nice, you off. Nice. That's cool. Um, they get Juwan James back. He opted out of the 2020 season. Um, he'll slide right into right tackle. You know, they got Dalton Reisner, Glasgow. Um, and then they drafted a, a good prospect guard in the third round, Quinn mm-hmm. M- Miners. Mm-hmm. Meaners. My name is Weiner. Thank uh, you, Mr. Miner. So, you know, uh, that's a good point. You know, the, the way they want to play was just smash mouth and defense that both well, well for Javante Williams. I don't necessarily know that's the way they want to play, but it seems like Fangio, that would fit what he wants to do. Oh, he um, wants to play. Defense. I mean, they, obviously they, they went hard on the receiving for receivers last year. They, they're in a division with the chiefs and the, and the chargers. So, you know, you got to keep pace and they, they tried so to they do took that. a corner with their first pick Patrick Sertain yeah. instead of a quarterback. That was a big, big hoopla, yeah. but. They I'm not really sure why you wouldn't take a why you wouldn't take a quarterback there unless you have something in the works. But hey, it is what it is. We'll talk about that more as the season goes on. But I, you know, I still like the spot for Javante Williams, but it, you know, didn't move the needle enough to be like, oh yeah, got to take him over Et or Harris. And I mean, next year he could easily maybe he has more value than Et and Harris. But it's Et and Harris for for me and you right now. Um, all right, let's move on to the next set of guys here. Devonta Smith goes to the Eagles. Again, terrible with, landing spot <laughs> paired up with his uh, one of his college quarterbacks. Um, I don't it's, it's not it's not my favorite landing spot necessarily. The Eagles are a little bit of a mess and, and a little bit in, in cap hell right now. But I do like the player. I do like there, that there's some continuity with the quarterback receiver. 
the player is very, very talented. Uh, so right. I'm, not, I'm not worried about the build or anything along those lines. No, no, I love the player. Don't love the landing spot. But um, what this is doing is creating a little bit of value. Bing, 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 bing. Um, the mock draft we did with the Patriots. Like Pee Wee's Playhouse. This is like the, uh, what, what do yeah. they have? The secret word? It's the secret word. Value. Now, he did go at 1-6 in this mock we just did with the patrons, uh, and that's that was a non-superflex. And then in the in the UDPL Superflex League that we're in, he went at one ten, or was it one eleven? Let me double check that. Uh yeah, one eleven, yeah. right? And 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 Waddle could have easily gone over him and him been at one twelve. So you it, it's possible you're getting him towards the later round of the you know, later end of the first round, and he was more of a of a super flex. middle Right, but he's still, still like you could see him slide down a little bit, maybe, and mm-hmm. there be some value. So don't, uh, don't. I'm gonna try not to just poo poo on him because of the landing spot. Right, that's the exercise here today. I hate yeah, the landing but spot it, for now, but who knows? They could not have Jalen Hurts next year. They bring in somebody good, and it completely be different. And you'd be like, "Damn, wish I'd taken Devontae Smith last year." But I or, didn't or, like Jalen Hurts. So maybe Hurts is the maybe Devontae's the guy who Hurts is always looking at. You know, and he's he's if they use him properly, he's got enough wiggle and movement around the field. And you know, the the bit the best thing that I've ever heard about Devonta Smith was obviously the Heisman and all those other things. But it's just the the amount of guys who said that this is like a second quarterback on the field he's calling out defensive alignments when he comes to the, the sideline after the first series and then as they're on the field he's telling dbs hey he's in a cloud you're doing this you're doing that and and you know he, he's he's so dialed into what he's doing and he's been playing at the elite of the elite level and smashing for as long as he can you can't touch receivers anymore like and you can't move, touch him he's way yeah. too quick if you fast. if you move him uh, his, jalen hurts called him a smooth criminal and i think that that is is uh, just uh just a very strong i can't imagine being a freaking defensive back about to line up with this man he just told he just told his teammates all the defenses that we're running yeah he knows where we're gonna be well, somebody out there's gonna go well that that isn't that hard i could do that yeah okay Fuck off. no you couldn't yeah well, when 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 defensive backs are talking about him in this light, right. you know that they ain't fucking around. Like this dude's a beast. So yeah, in flag not, football, when they're only running a cover two or a cover three, I can tell you what they're in. Right, but, they're in cover two. <laughs> right, <laughs> there's only a few defenses you're running flag. Football, right, so all right, but, so let's go to Jalen Waddle. Um, I'd coin flip between these two guys, whereas maybe pre-draft, I was probably a little more headstrong on Devonta Smith. Yeah, I do like the. I, I do like. I want to take uh, Waddle right because of the. I do like spot. the. I do like the landing <laughs> spot. Uh, for Waddle and and dare I say as as odd as it is that the that the Dolphins front oh, office and situation makes me feel more comfortable than the Eagles does right now which is odd and super weird to say, but I, I feel really good about what they're doing. Obviously, again, you get familiarity and the, the old college link up. So the Dolphins do address the line issues. They, they pick up they, the, the Dolphins just had a very good draft. Again, they, they just kept drafting the value players that, that, that were that they needed to fill out their roster. Uh, I think they did a great job. They're going to give to every opportunity, just like we were talking about with, uh, uh, the Giants and Tooney and given surrounding, given no excuses for Daniel Jones not to be good. Now they're giving uh, to a no excuses not to be good. You get a full off season. The lines, hopefully a little upgraded. You never know, obviously with any rookies. They've been trying to upgrade it. It's not for lack of trying. And then yeah. they bring in Will Fuller in the off season. And they draft exactly. Waddle and they, they draft Devontae Parker. Your they boy have Hunter Preston Long, Williams. And, and then now you have Gasecki who can, can play his natural position. Hunter Long can move a little bit more. Uh, in line and do some different things for them. And I really like Hunter Long. That, that 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 hurt a little bit that he went to a place where there is already another really good tight end. Uh, but again, 12 Coming personnel. Coming from the Patriots, right? Yep. 12 personnel is 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 the new the new thing in the league that, well, not the new thing, but, you know, any good team has figured out that that, that right. gives you and that's Flores an, that's got an to advantage see that there. firsthand. Right. Flores was seeing that firsthand. Um, so yeah, I like the Jalen Waddle. It's a coin flip between Devonta and, and Jalen Waddle for me and when they're neck and neck. Uh, so take who you like there. I'm not going to be upset either way. 
Um, and then maybe the biggest mover so far for me through this whole process, whether it's rational or not, was Rondell Moore. I think Rondell Moore, we, we both liked him. Uh, <clears throat> kind of said, you know, he needed a, needed to land in a good spot that would help him out. I think this is a good spot. We've been clamoring for Cliff to really, you know, blow up the offense. And, you know, it seems like it's there sometimes and not there other times that, you know, Kyler hasn't quite progressed all the way to where he needs to be. He's still young though. It's crazy how far that pendulum can swing in a season, man. In the beginning of the season, he was the best thing ever. You had to take him over to Sean. And then by the end of the season, it was like, I don't know that he can read defenses. And and now now his stock was falling and it's crazy how much something can swing once. But this to me, obviously nuke is fantastic. And they bring in AJ green to take a flyer on him for a year, which is great. Another guy out there, but, who knows how long he'll stay healthy for no knock on him. If he's out there, he's probably going to be just fine. But Rondell Moore can play with a, a guy like uh, Kyler. Kyler Murray here with, with, with the running ability and moving around and be able to shake free and get free and right. throw it the intermediate pass and take it long. Not that nuke, you know, isn't fantastic, but that's not really nukes game. They got a different style of receiver here who can take the big ones, the short ones long and, 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 take the top off as well and squat 600 pounds and is just a maniac and they can do a lot of different things with them. So hopefully uh, Kingsbury has some creative things to do with Rondell Moore and and gives him the time, you know, Rondell's going to work hard. We we talked about, about that in his, in his, um, in his pre-draft rookie Rookie video. Um, and that's what we, we really loved about the guy. There's, there's a sort of chip on his shoulder, but he just works. He's just going to outwork you. And he has the physical tools, the God gifts of speed. And yeah, he's not twitch. He's not tall, but he's fast as hell. And he's yoked. That's the, yeah. I mean, he's squatting 600 pounds as a true freshman. Like what the, what are we talking about here? I, man, I was so pumped when, when the Cardinals took him. I, I feel like the saints would have been the only better ish landing spot. Um, but I don't know yeah, what's going to uh, happen with their quarterback and right moving forward. Green Bay, Green question. Bay would have been nice, but who Green knows Bay what's going to happen nice. with Aaron? But don't know what's right exactly. So when when the Cardinals got him, and it was like, you know, I don't even know how. Obviously, we would love for Cliff Kingsbury to get all creative and everything, but like all that, like Rondell Moore's best, he's at his best when he's in space, and that's just the general concept of that. Cardinals offense is to spread everybody out and just create space off the rip. So it's just, just what they do is already putting him in a position where he succeeds the best because man, when the ball is in his hands, it's just incredible because he's not just slippery and fast and twitchy, but he's like powerful sometimes and, and just, just so elusive. And it's just, yeah. it's just, if it you, should be fun to watch. I'm excited. And yeah, I got to move Rondell Moore up because of, because of this, because of the landing spot was so good. Not sure how high, not sure where. We'll figure it out in the rookie mocks. Be sure to subscribe. Um, if he wouldn't have been hurt and not been able to put a bunch of tape down, he probably would have ended up being a first round selection. Yeah, um, but but nice, nice. That he's big, big mover for me there. Um, let's, let's talk about Bateman now. Let's get into Bateman. Uh, obviously, we I use Tylen Wallace as an example of a Terrible you know landing. automatically perceived bad landing spot, and sure it is. It certainly is. Um, you can throw all the stats you want up there about Lamar Jackson, but if you honestly sit down and watch a game, you know that we're gonna we're gonna stack the middle of the field and we're gonna make you throw it outside, which is not where he's really shine at doing. People have kind of figured him out a little bit, and the and the good teams when it counts end up beating the Ravens or have been beating the Ravens, but they haven't necessarily surrounded like we just talked about with the other guys. They haven't necessarily surrounded him with the best receiving talent. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson's great. And the, the plus side of him, maybe not being the most accurate quarterback. And I know before you could throw all the stats you want, watch the fucking game. What, what he does is he moves around and then creates wide open throwing lanes. So he doesn't need to be, like, he certainly is accurate. I'm not saying he's never not like, it doesn't matter. Um, he can throw accurate right. balls at times, right. but at times the ball's hitting the ground. So, right. So, it's, but that's you know, not how he's winning. And, and, and it, they've had success with it. And he's obviously, he won the MVP and they, they had a great regular sure. season and they can go deepish into the playoffs. But I don't know that that's ever going to get them over the top, but they're basically going to have to pay him. And, and it's not that they haven't tried, you know, to, Marquise Brown, I think was a, was a really high yeah, first round, pick. really high first round pick, but I didn't, we didn't love that pick either. Yeah. And, and it's not, it's not, it's not Bateman. It's, it's, he would, 
we like I didn't want I didn't not like Hollywood Brown because of his size and stature and that he was an outlier. I just didn't like him that much. And I certainly didn't like the fit here. Now you have Hollywood Brown, who if he's your second or third option over Andrews and maybe Bateman, you know, where Willie Sneed is your chain mover and and got a lot of attention. Now you can sub Bateman into that position. I think Tylen Wallace is is gonna be good in this offense, ad libbing and, and contested catching down the field. Uh, for Lamar Jackson. So they finally surround him with weapons. Yeah. Does he bump down a little bit for sure? Am I taking him out of the first round? No. And is he the wide receiver two anymore? No, probably not. Was he ever my wide receiver two? No, he wasn't, but he was some other people's I'm sure I saw it all day long. All right. Let me you know, not so hear you, any more about that. You have to bump him down a little bit, I think, but I mean, there's probably going to get, get a, add a little value here. And it's not that he can't be bad. Sure. The receiving the amount of volume that he's going to see isn't what you want to see. That's the landing spot. The draft capital is great, but the landing spot isn't awesome. And they're a running team for the most part. But again, and, and it feels like they're about to pay Lamar. So it does. It's not like the, it's not like an Eagle situation where you can be like, well, maybe it'd be completely different next year. Well, I, I'm not. So I'm not 100 percent sold on it. They're picking up his fifth year option. I think they're going to see how it goes. Um, but it's, Lamar deserves I don't know everything. How they Lamar just gets move I just, on from him, though. You know, he's had so much. Success. Well, this is a conversation to have at another time. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. get too far down this load. I got twenty minutes on this, if you want. But my bad. Um, that's all right. Um, so yeah, I think I think there will end up being some Bateman value. I still think he he was one of my favorite. Hey, you can kind of set it and forget it. He can kind of go anywhere and win and do his thing. I think he can be, you know, a A plus Willie Sneed. I'm not trying to downplay Rashad Bateman, but that was the guy who, right. you know, Willie Sneed was like the only one close to startable. -ish <laughs> Sometimes. Him. Yeah. Right. So you put Hollywood and you, and you get, you get the tight end Mark Andrews and you get the good running game and you open up those, those running, those throwing lanes. Um, and I think Bateman can, can, can do just fine in that offense, but the ceiling might be capped a little bit on a weekly basis. Um, so next, although he does succeed in tight quarters and there is a decent amount of red zone opportunities down there. Uh, maybe he takes some of those away from Mark Andrews. I, sure. I well, you saw this game. You saw this game change a little bit this year where they used him a little bit more on the inside and shorter slants and, and stuff like that. And he can take those the distance. So I think he can fit into what they do uh, in Baltimore pretty well and, and be still a really, a really good pick for you. All right. So let's go to Terrace. Not to be confused with Terrence. Marshall, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great people, landing spot. I think it's a great landing spot. I think I think some teams really whiffed on him. I'm not really sure why the Rams, you know, but he lands. I think the, the, the Carolina Panthers consistently, again, just jumped on the right guys. These are two guys in Joe Brady and Matt Rule who aren't far away from the college ranks, still have a very good pulse on what's going on, and they just kept snapping up all the values. And now you have familiarity with Terrace Marshall, who was on that LSU team that Joe Brady was the, he wasn't the offensive coordinator, the passing game coordinator or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, but he, Joe Brady comes into the league instantly has 3000 th yard wide receivers. You didn't have Christian McCaffrey last year. Uh, so maybe you don't quite have 3000 yard receivers with Christian McCaffrey, but Terrace Marshall is a guy who is big for his size, can hit the home run, but he can also play that little bit of small ball. When you look at the heat map of where he does things, a lot of in the, in the intermediate, in the middle of the field kind of stuff that he can take long. They lost Curtis Samuel. Robbie Anderson isn't, I don't think he's long for being he, there too much longer. And maybe, maybe they do end up re-signing him because him and rule have a history and he is pretty good, but he is a little old last year of his deal. It's the last yeah. year of his deal. And they did pick up the DJ Moore's fifth year option. So he's there through 22, but like you said, Samuel's out of there. And I mean, Joe, Joe Brady with, with Justin Jefferson and, uh, Jamar Chase, this guy had 13 touchdowns in that offense. And that was a prolific offense, probably the best call, one of the best college offenses we've ever seen. But Joe Brady right. said, Give me this guy. Now, does Joe right. Brady stay now, hey. after this year? Probably yeah. not. There's a he was getting some interviews this year. There's a decent chance that Joe Brady moves on, but I really like Matt Rule and I really like Terrace Marshall here. We were we were right. pre-draft saying, Hey, Terrace Marshall could could be above Rashad Bateman, and now it really has some legs uh, yeah. to me. So yeah, but it feels the question it feels mark is right. Sam Darnold. We don't know. I want to be in camp. Sam Darnold. I want to be a half glass, half full was in a bad situation. 
uh, and they'll get the most out of him here. But yeah, I mean, he's just as young almost as any of these other prospects coming in the league right now. And he didn't really get a fair shot. I think they are. They did pick up his fifth year option after the draft because they didn't end up with a quarterback. So he's probably there another year. But I mean, if it doesn't work out with them, I, I have trust that, that Matt Rule is going to figure it out and, and the organization is going to get somebody else in there because they, you know, they care a lot about the quarterback. They went after Deshaun when they could and 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 maybe they just didn't like Fields or, or Mac yeah, Jones. They, and I like that. They're going to be aggressive. They They're going to be aggressive. So I, I have faith with them moving forward. Um, you know, Terrace Marshall back to him and scoring 13 touchdowns with Joe Burrow and Joe Brady. He follows that up the next year when nobody came to play for LSU. They had a bum ass team, bad quarterback play, and he still put up 10 touchdowns. With nobody else there doing anything, he still scored 10 touchdowns. And I think I've read some stat where, like, basically every time he's been targeted since 2019 is, like, a perfect passer rating for the quarterback. Like, yeah. it was a great landing spot. I love that them boys liked him. I already liked him. Let's go. Terrace, Terrace Marshall, let's go. Yeah, I like what you said there that about being aggressive with the quarterbacks. And I think even if Sam isn't the guy, they're going to figure it out. They have a rich, aggressive owner who wants to – figure that position out. So I, I, I like that. Um, and again, this isn't just one year and which is something that we all need to take in the back of our mind and be like, all right, it's not just for one year. This is why you do your homework. You do your work. You listen to guys, if that's what you want to do and you figure out the pieces to the puzzle, where you like guys, who you like, and now you're determined. Now all this is shaken out and now you're going to get determined. All right. Well, I do like that guy, but I don't like the value on him. I like that guy. I like the value there. Maybe I should be trading up here. Why you have to subscribe for the rookie mocks? Cause we're going to be talking about that. All right, Kadarius Tony, Tony, Probably easily the most easily the most hated pick in the first round, maybe outside of Leatherwood. Um, How in the world is this man going to get a first round draft capital and like slide down the rookie draft? <laughs> yeah, and I think I think he may, may have in some cases maybe he moved up a couple of spots because everything there wasn't the most favorable spots in in a lot well, of situations. But when we were on that live show, the TFA or whatever, everybody freaked out, and got so mad. They were like, "Oh, Gettleman's going to get all and and they suck." And well, they are. Oh, Sterl, what is Sterling Shepard dead? Don't they have Evan Ingram and 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 Darius Slayton? And it's like, I mean. Sterling has three years left on his deal, but there's a potential out in 22 for very little dead cap. Slayton has two years left on his deal with basically zero cap hit. And then Ingram, they have, he has one more year. So, I mean, things and, can and be I, changing honestly, I, here. Honestly, I think they can get out of Galladay after a year. Oh, yeah? I think so. I don't, I don't have the contract in front of me. and We weren't diving too deep, so I didn't do yeah. all my research. But, but it just, like, there's going to be some movement, and this is not just for one year. Like... And he is still a raw prospect. Like he's he needs to get some refinement and, and and probably develop some of that route tree. But like he's just he's just an explosive stellar athlete. And you know, obviously the off field concerns were not there for these NFL teams. <laughs> there were multiple teams ready to scoop him up in that first round. Yeah. And so that 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 to me solidified it for me because that was the only thing. It was like you know, he's got this rap career and he's had he's had the gun issue and the other incident on campus. And it's just like, I, I don't really care about any of that. But I didn't I th I could see him having slid in the NFL draft because of stuff like that. We've seen that before. And, th and they just they didn't care. They don't care. So that I, I certainly don't care. Then, like, yeah, let, fire him up, man. If, and if, if you're telling me he's going to be even more of a value now, like smash, smash well, the tone. He didn't late. At the, at the very round. exactly at the very least he didn't he didn't lose his being a value pick for me and he's still going to be around in that same slot and I have no problem taking him maybe he does ride the bench for a year or so and you, he gets on the field a little bit and, and has some splashy plays here and there because he's if you get the ball in his hands there's going to be some splash and I, you know everybody's splash. mad at him that's fine he's old yada 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 I'm, I'll, I'll take the toonies in the middle of the second round if, if you're going to give them to me um okay. And, and, you know, again, tune into the rookie mocks and we'll talk more about where these guys fall. And, you know, yeah, there will be a couple of guys that I want to take ahead of them. But once we get into that second round, I'm going to take that guy because I do like him. And we'll, if he's if he's good, the cream will rise to the top and and maybe they get rid of Sterling. I, like, I always like Sterling Shepard, but like maybe they do get rid of Sterling Shepard. Maybe they do. Maybe Darius Slayton isn't as good as I thought right. he might be. Maybe they they get rid of Galladay after a year or two. And, you know, who knows? Anyway. All right, Michael Carter. This guy made some 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 stock up arrows for uh, 
the the NFL draft and your NFL and your rookie mock drafts or your rookie regular drafts. I keep calling them mock drafts. Um, to me, this was this was fantastic. He ends up going to the Jets, where the Jets have been concentrating on bolstering the trenches. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sold on Zach Wilson, but they've put pieces around him. They got a nice receiving core. They have a nice offensive line. They had, they, uh, you know, they drafted Makai Becton last year. They got uh, Vera Tucker this year. They're, they've, they've made Joe Douglas is a big inside out kind of guy build from the inside out. Um, and I, I think they're doing that. I put, they're putting everything in the right position. And he's uh, a Kyle Shanahan guy. So then they bring in Sala and they bring in uh, Lafleur. Oh, right. Sala, right? All came over from that Niners tree. I really like Sala. He's going to get the most out of his players. Now New York's a little different, but then Lafleur is a first-year play caller, so they could struggle a little bit in calling plays here. But Lafleur is going to kind of carry that same 49ers Shanahan vibe offensively. So you're going to stick Michael Carter in a system that's similar to that with that offensive line and those weapons around him. If Zach Wilson can be any sort of threat, I really like the idea of Michael Carter, who was the the, the uh, second. The, the one B in that, or, or sometimes even the one a in that uh, Javante Williams, UNC attack. Um, and I thought that was a, a great, they, again, the jets just kept snatching up all the good value picks of, of guys. And I thought they, they, they actually took two Michael Carters. And so I, th- I thought Michael Carter, the running back is definitely not a lot of running backs uh, in your rookie mock and your rookie drafts here. So I think he just shot up to that, to that top of the second round, uh, maybe even possibly back of the, first round if you're desperate uh, but I thought I thought he gained gained a little value in my eyes I was a little uncertain and I like it thoughts the landing spot right is is prime for opportunity because they have well Michael P. P. Ryan Ty Johnson I like him Tevin Ty Coleman is okay Tevin Coleman that was a good signing for them but it, it feels like they're like Carter could could carve out a spot and, you know, he, he's a good all around player. He had 82 catches in his career at North Carolina and he's a home run type of hitter and he can he can break tackles and he can run between the tackles. And I, yeah, he's a good all around player. And I, I just wasn't wasn't sure how to feel about him pre draft. Didn't know where he was going to go. Didn't know how his role is going to fit in. And I, and I, I still kind of have those questions, but there's just not much there. So. He should get some opportunity, and that's what you're looking for when you're yeah. diagnosing these landing spots. Yeah, agreed. All right, so Trey Sermon, uh, third round Ooh. pick, Sam Biggest Fran mover. traded two fours to get him. Um, so that's that's fantastic. We we all really liked Trey Sermon. Uh, we were definitely into the the middle of the second, early second drafting of Trey Sermon. The the risk was already baked in to Trey Sermon with the injury history. And we all know about it and we all know it's a risk. Um, But, you know, the 49ers did a great job of building a cheap, good running back room. You have Mostert in there who is a absolutely an angle crusher and and just speed kills kind of guy. Jeffrey Wilson came in there and did his thing, but neither one of those guys has stayed, you know, healthy. Tevin Coleman's out of there. Uh, Jarek McKinnon's out of there. So then what do they do? They come back and they trade up and they get Trey Sermon, who's, you know, just a beast when healthy uh, could do it on three downs runs super hard and super physical um, kind of gives them a, a little bit. I mean, Wilson runs pretty hard too, but, and then they come back and they draft Elijah Mitchell, which in, in our mock draft before there, we kind of gave Elijah Mitchell a little shout out. So it's nice to see them pick him up. Uh, I love that, it when these, these NFL teams <laughs> that I, I trust with their running back judgment, take a guy that I already like, but it's like, damn, it's already crowded there, you know, and yeah. they, they sign Wayne Gallman in the off season. Who's a really good all around fucking player and never gets any fucking respect. Let me have that two star review back. Whoever the hell sent me that. It's not worth a two star review. Uh, Cause we like years Wayne ago, Gallman. still hanging on to that one. Huh? I'll never forget that first two, first non five star review because we took Wayne Gallman too early in a rookie mock back in whenever 2017. It wasn't even that early. It was like probably the end of the second Late round too. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, that, that, they did a good job, but again, am I moving Trey Sermon up to like one eight, one nine because of lack of running backs? No, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna if somebody else wants to do that, that's fine. Um, yeah, hey, this is you, a weird one, man, because we like the player and we like the landing spot, but it, it's so crowded. And we like the does, capital. He traded up for him. Shanahan's pounding the table again. I didn't think he was gonna get drafted in the third round uh, because of those injury concerns, and 
but it's still like, man, there's so many other players there. We know they like to use a stable. We know he struggles to stay healthy. And it's like, I, I wanted to take him out of value, but now this is, it's not, it's not a value. It's, it's, it's expensive money to yeah. get Trey Sermon now. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't feel super bullish, you know? Yeah. Even I'm, though I'm, I like the player in the landing spot. I'm not going to get super bullish on it. Um, they like to use a committee. They use a hot hand. He's been injured, so I, I can't get too excited about it. There was some value. It's probably gone, uh, but that's kind of what we're talking about here. You know, you got those are the things you got to evaluate. Hey, I love Trey Sermon, but don't get caught in your feelings reaching up for Trey Sermon. Hey, if, you, if you're 112 and you feel like your team is just stacked because you just won the championship and you just been just dragging your dick across everyone's face for years, and you want to take Trey Sermon because you like the Niners, you like the, the the player, you like the scheme. I'm not really going to argue with you. Um, probably should try to trade back, but that's a, to a spot or two. But that's not always, in, you know, it's easy to say that and just move on. But it's, it's not always on the table. Um, you can't always get something done. Everybody isn't willing to just move around uh, for stuff. So Trey Sermon is really interesting. It'll be see, be fun to see where he the value does kind of park itself and and if it is worth it or not. So again. Got to keep paying attention. Elijah Moore uh, shoots up the board. Everybody loved this guy. Pre-draft, this guy's had Guaranteed a bunch of 200 first yard pick. Pre-draft, 200 yard games, crushed the SEC. Um, goes to the Jets. Blew up, blew up his pro day, right? Yeah. G ridiculous fast forty and 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 you know not much burst, but when you run a four three five, people get real excited. Yeah. So I mean, love. I, I like I like Elijah Moore. I, I guess I like the landing spot. Is it Who's, weird that the Jets didn't take like he went one pick right before Javante Williams? Like, ah, that was a good spot for the Jets to take Javante, but <laughs> they passed on him and take Elijah Moore. I think it's good maybe, for Zach Wilson, but how maybe you, again I, you're going. They were in the Niner system for a little while, and you play this with a with a little bit more of a bigger box instead of getting the one guy to do everything. You got Michael Carter, and you got the Coleman's and the P Rines, and, and this guy and that guy. Um, so maybe they're viewing it that way and then they can upgrade the the slot position with Elijah Moore. Now we all love Crowder. So that's so a little he's bit probably of out of there, right? He'll be like a post June one cut or something. So uh, I mean, maybe maybe they maybe I don't know what they're going to do with him, but I always loved Crowder. But Elijah Moore is probably going to take that spot over. And it's really, you know, I'm not 100 percent sold on Zach Wilson. Maybe he'll be great. To me, it's probably going to come down in the beginning years of Zach Wilson of who's going to be his guy. Is it going to is he going to latch on to Corey Davis? Is he who's the veteran stud? Is he going to lock on to Mims, who's just a big, tall, physical, fast guy? Or is he going to lock on to Elijah Moore? Uh, you know, who's going to be his boy? Because um, that's, you know, a lot of times that's what can happen with rookie guys. They, they really lean on a, on a crutch there. Whoever uh, looks a, the youngest, maybe is going to be like his favorite guy. <laughs> They've or maybe the oldest. Maybe he's, maybe he feels like he's throwing it to his dad. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely uh, Crowder. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm, but I'm still, I still have no problem taking Elijah Moore um, end of the first, top of the second year. Um, so again, be interesting. I'm I'm excited about that. I guess. Um, and I, again, I like the. I don't the know way. if I'm excited about it. Yeah, that's fair. I guess that was stupid. Hard um, to get excited. I mean, I, I but can, I, I do I like do where the it. Jets are going. I want to root for the Jets. I like what they're doing. I like everything they have. I Give like me their... Rondale more though. Well, sure. I mean, okay, absolutely. Okay. All right, all right. I'm taking him. Yeah, a hundred percent. Bateman uh, or more? Elijah Moore. Uh, I don't know, man. I haven't chewed on that enough yet. Yeah, yeah. All right. My heart, my, my heart, we're not. My heart and instincts say Bateman still, but okay. Could could be easily be Elijah trying to Moore. trade back, <laughs> yeah, or up, you know, like yeah. let's get out of that area. The end of the first round got a lot less fun. I feel like after this draft, but yeah, and the end of the second round got a lot less fun. It did. We did this it rookie really mock, did. and I'm like, man, who the hell do I take now? I can't. I want to take Chuba, but we'll get to Chuba anyway. All right, let's move along. All right, St. Brown lands. The Lions don't really draft anybody as far as uh, skill position goes. Receivers, they bring in a bunch of undrafted free agents, which I kind of like. I kind of smell what they're cooking there. Um, they're not really ready to compete or win necessarily, but I love that draft. 
They did all they they did all the ugly stuff that nobody's going to be that excited for. And they the, Sewell fell into their lap and he could be a, a 10 year just anchor over there. I feel like the the culture of Detroit needed to be broken down and thrown away. Everybody loves to hate on Dan Campbell. I don't really know anything about Dan Campbell. I don't know if I love him or not or hate him or the press conference was stupid about biting kneecaps or whatever. But like, I do like what they just did right there. I do like the draft. They, they got a bunch of good interior defensive players. They got that excellent uh, possible just 10 year monster anchor on the, on the left tackle position. Um, and you know, they got Jared Goff, and we'll see where that goes. They're not really tied to him. They can make other moves and build other parts of that team later, but you gotta, you gotta change the culture and build this thing from the inside out. And I love what they did there. St. Brown, uh, they brought over the Rams GM. Uh, I saw some comparisons to, from Matt Harmon's reception perception about kind of a mold of Cooper cup with St. Brown when, and he, and this was the GM that drafted, uh, Cooper cup. Um, and could and, and obviously golf is there so he could really latch on to him they don't really have a player like that on the roster right now it's Quentin Cephas who could end up being a really good value they have Cephas. I'm assuming that they still have um, the guy who opted out last year from Jabronimo Allison I don't know how the opt-out works uh, with that uh, I they, think they I think signed Tyrell can. Williams um, so they got a bunch of rangy guys like that but not not anybody like St. Brown. So the d- decent moving mover upper for me, like I said, Tylen Wallace would have been a guy before this that I would have absolutely drafted before him. Now it's St. Brown all day. Right. He's moved into that upper second, <coughs> excuse me, kind of, kind of a uh, player there. I think there's, there's going to be really good value there. Uh, should kind of hopefully latch on with golf. I say TJ Hawkinson, let me get a hell. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, TJ Hawkinson definitely made it out of there with some stock up. He's going to um, be on the biggest winners. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, I think Amon Ra St. Brown, which I think he goes by, like, Amon Ra. I think he tries to combine that together, which, like, Amon Ra is, like, the Egyptian. Well, it's, it's when the two Egyptian guys merged into one. Uh, I think I had something down there about that anyway. The supreme god of the universe uh merged with the uh egyptian sun god so it's like as good as it gets if in, in, maybe in, he should have egyptian scripture on his body well he won't get a tattoo because uh, i like that little lob softball he says why would you uh put a bumper sticker on a lamborghini which i don't know that he's a lamborghini you know but he is a good all around yeah maybe like a know, lexus sedan. 430h yeah. like a nice <laughs> Yeah, like you know, he doesn't he doesn't have the size in the in the in the in the weight or anything like that. But he, he does he did he does have some burst, perform well in the vert and the broad. He's obviously really strong. His dad's Mister Universe. Uh, he ran a decent 40, 4 five one right his pro day, so it's probably a little slower than that. A good three cone drill. Uh, they didn't let him. He didn't let them measure his arms because he's got short little arms. But he does still high point the ball drink really well. Um, and he's got some yak ability. He's got some after the catch. He played a lot in the slot before 2020 when he when he moved more to playing out wide, but does have a bunch of that slot experience, which you mentioned with Cooper Cup. So, he, you know, and he was a highly touted high Great prospect, prospect yeah, five star rookie, had had offers from everywhere and uh, you know, honor roll student, um, a, f- a few minor nicks and stuff. But I mean, you know, he's a he's a borderline twitchy mover. He's got really good change of direction and, and it's just an all around good game, I think. And there's just going to be so many. Maybe maybe not a great at anything, but good at a lot of stuff kind of guy, you know. Right. And, and scratch the Le- LS 500 was the Lexus I was looking for. OK, OK. I don't big, know my Lexus big body well. sedan. Um, but but there should be a bunch of opportunity here. Right. And Jared Goff obviously love throwing a Cooper Coops, Cooper Coop, Cooper Cup. So this is another guy with terrible draft capital and bad metrics that ended up being good, but that was the opportunity crown I just put on. Yeah, yeah. St. Brown, St. Brown, big winner, big winner. If we had awards, it would be the opportunity crown goes to St. Brown. Um, All right, Kenneth Gainwell, which he could have been one of those running backs that really, you know, end of the first round due to the deficiency of running backs or lack thereof, kind of landed in a mass spot for me, Uh, but you know. I like the player. I like the ability. Obviously, there's a Miles Sanders there. He's kind of a pass catching back, kind of two guys to go along with that. So we'll we'll see what happens. I still have no problem taking Gainwell. 
Um, I just was hoping for a, a little bit better spot to push the value up so I could grab him. But again, probably around the St. Brown area where I'll be taking Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel great being in Philly, right? You got Jalen Hurts and he's more <laughs> of a pass catching back and Miles Sanders can excel at that. If anything, this is probably good for Miles Sanders. They didn't take anybody of more stature than than Gainwell, I guess, but it does it does add some competition in that backfield. But you know, they've got Devontae Smith. They just I just don't know where any of these targets are going to come from. I don't feel like they're going to be throwing the ball that much, although they're probably going to be behind. I don't I don't love it. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I was looking for a spot and and some some capital and all that kind of stuff that we talked about hating on on the beginning of the show to to help me really feel good about the value and moving them up and be a valuable piece. But I'm probably going to leave him around where he was. Uh, I still have no problem taking him. I think he's a very versatile, really fun player. Uh, and next year could be a completely different situation in hundred percent. So just was hoping that he would, could, could help me, uh, you know, replenish my running back stock where, you know, I could probably trade down now and still, you know, for a couple more seconds and, and stab on, on a gain. Well, so, all right. So Chuba Hubbard, he was a favorite of ours going into this. We were like, screw the hate, yada, yada, yada was hoping that he could be an end of the first round running back top of the second round running back in your rookie us, draft in your rookie draft. Obviously that that's not going to happen now. He's a really high end handcuff. Uh, you touched on it earlier. I love when teams who we respect the evaluation of the player, take the player that you like. They took Terrence Marshall or Terrace Marshall. And they took Chuba Hubbard. Uh, just saw the value there and took him. Uh, if Christian McCaffrey's healthy, probably not a whole lot of value there, but a really high end handcuff, probably a third round pick now for you or end of the second one. You're just like, who the hell do I pick? I'll take Chuba because I know that guy's pretty good. Uh, there's some name recognition and some value on the team. On yeah, the team what, on. what else can you say when the guy you like gets drafted and is now sitting behind the best back in the league? You know, right. It's, that this is truly a bad landing spot for Hubbard, although it is a good ecosystem. It's a good environment. Uh, and Matt rule said, you know, he missed out on him, getting him at, uh, at Baylor. And now he got a chance to, to grab him here, here in uh, Carolina. So I love it yeah. for Carolina. It's, he's a great backup. You know, I think he can do everything Mike Davis did when Christian McCaffrey went out. Um, I think he's a decent pass catcher and, yeah, and much different back than the, Mike Davis, but sure. And, and probably even more, right. Cause he can hit home runs. And yeah. uh, so it's kind of a bummer, but now you're going to get great value on Chuba Hubbard. Yeah. Q Q Lawrence Fishburne is cowboy Curtis and saying, they said the secret word. <laughs> There's another PB playhouse drop. Lawrence Fishburne was in PB. Yeah. He was, he was cowboy Curtis. I don't think I ever watched that show. Check it out. <laughs> All right. We got two more and we're out of here. Tylen Wallace just wanted to touch on him for a second. Cause we, I liked him. Jay Wayne did like him. It was all about the value where he fell for both of us for the most part, uh, put together a fun show about him. He lands, you know, a little late and uh, in a, in a precarious spot here. But again, I think the value is going to be good. If I can take him in the third round, I'll take him because I do like the player. Um, and I think, I think he is an asset. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe adding a guy like Tylen Wallace and Bateman and ho freeze up Hollywood Brown and do some different stuff. Maybe now that that offense is just, you know, maybe they're going to let Lamar cook. I don't know. <laughs> well, they already tried to let him freak, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> All right. One more. Can we do one more? Yeah. I'll let you have one more. Amari Rogers. Come on. A Raj, please come back to the Packers so that you could throw to my boy Amari Rogers. Cause you know, love the landing spot until A Raj forces his way out of there. Then you don't like that landing spot anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know that the uh the the, the, the Packers were really like, uh, here we'll get you a play, we'll get you some some skill position help, A Raj here in the third round. Like, yeah. He is a guy that can take the top off similar to what, you know, Randall Cobb played that role. And, and, and I went to bat for Amari. Glad I got some Amari Rogers in on that last yeah. uh, super flex mock at the very Strong end timing of the extra guys to just keep in mind. And and now he's, now he's jumping up. He's jumping up. People want him now because he's, because he's a Packer and, and they think about what Randall Cobb did and what, what Amari could do. And I, I stand by the fact that 
you know, Clemson put out, puts out good wide receivers. They put out strong outside wide receivers and, and decent slot receivers. And he's the best slot receiver that we've ever had from, from an athletic standpoint and just, just everything. And, and like ETN gives credit to Mario Rogers for helping ETN become a better pass catcher because he was the one staying after practice and working with ETN to like get on the jugs machine and throwing passes and work on his technique and all this stuff. And like Amari Rogers was the one putting in time to help ETN become a better player. It's like, you just love hearing that type of thing when you know a guy is committed to, to helping his teammates and, and just being a good off the field person. And then when you combine that with the skills that he brings to the, on the field, if, I'm, if, if Aaron Rogers is still there, baby, this is, this is a great, a great landing spot. Yes, absolutely. And if he is still there, he even if he isn't there, he just rocket shit up the board regardless, Rodgers or not. So but, that, you know, when you get to a point in the draft now, end of the second in a non super flex draft, you know, I'm still taking Amari Rodgers without any hesitation. And then, you know, I, I still wouldn't mind him even moving up a couple of picks because. Yeah, maybe he doesn't end up there, but I still think the Packers are a pretty good organization. Like they don't, they don't, they're not going to mortgage the future to, to necessarily build around them, but they're always going to be semi-competitive. There isn't too many down years. Of course they had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, but they found Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Um, and maybe Jordan Love is, is the guy we don't know. Uh, but Amari Rodgers, regardless, has shot himself up the board. And that was, you know, you, you said a couple of times you wanted to do a video on him, And I was like, well, I don't want to do a video on him, Not because I don't like him, because I don't think anybody's going to care about him. They would uh, but, have but either. Now, You're now, right. You were not wrong. <laughs> right. But now they, people are caring about him. That video and, would be getting clicks right now though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I think Amari Rogers is, is planning himself right now in the second round. Um, probably near the end with a little uncertainty. Yeah, you, you took him at 2-9 in this rookie mock we did with the patrons, non-super flex. So still still pretty decent value because you're like, who do I even want to take around there, you know? Yeah. And so he feels he feels like a good a good pick. He's like Hunter Renfro on steroids. Like he's... Yeah. He's he's a polished guy. I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for him. I'm glad I, he got drafted higher than I thought he would. He got drafted over other wide receivers. I did not think he would get drafted over... Just really excited. Uh, yeah, he started to gain a little buzz at the end there, and uh, that's what you want. That's when you want the buzz, and good, good for him. Good for him. I do, I do really like him. I think he he was a lot of the heart and soul of of Clemson this year, and uh, you know, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think he's he can he can give them something that they don't have in Green Bay, regardless of Aaron stays or not. Uh, which is, you know, a middle of the field guy. They have Devontae Adams, who obviously is one of the best in the game, but the other guys that they have are guys who take the top off. So the, the, he's somebody that can give you something different. Um, and he and can think, take the top off too. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. But that's, you know, I'm just saying MVS and and St. Brown and those other and the other guys that but they he have. he can also catch. <laughs> had, through, had through, you know, running through that offense were guys that were typically targeted downfield uh, where – Rodgers can give you somebody who can be targeted at the LOS or in the middle of the field uh, intermediately. So, Amari Rodgers, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> all right, kids. Did we get it all? We didn't get it all, but we, we didn't get enough. it all. But we were in through enough of them there to have yeah. a good time and talk, get yeah. some, get it out there, let you degenerates uh, have, have your fun and, and make sure that you're didn't go into sweats and vomiting. So, yeah, where's uh, the reaction? Yeah. YouTube's about to be mad at us. We haven't put out a video in over a week, so we had to, yeah. we had to get well, it in. You know, I got guys going on vacation. I got guys having organs taken out. Like, that's just, our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next time. We'll be back with some uh, biggest winners and losers, and then some mock drafts. So be sure let me to get, do let that. me get that iTunes five star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, let me get that subby. Let me get that subby. Them scribies. Them scribies. Fuck your subbies. It's scribies. <laughs> like the, subbies. the subbies is good too. Scribies. <laughs> scribies sounds like a something you like a sexually transmitted disease or something, man. That, that's scribies. That's me scribies, man. <laughs> Boy, them scribies be burning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got them scribies. All right, y'all. Let me get that scribie. Yeah. Peace. Peace.